And it's the interesting part about that, compared to many other industries, is that this data is produced by humans, like data like Facebook or a Twitter. It's us who produce that data, and not systems like manufacturing companies or financial services. So there are peaks, troughs, there are various situations in which different kinds of data need to be handled. And two examples, two very interesting examples came to me while I was, uh, while I was looking through the impact of what data could have on talent. One was the Marks and Spencer 148 model. And they, they realized that for every individual who spends a dollar in the Marks and Spencer store is compared to someone who's gone through basically the internet spends four dollars in both the internet and the store. And somebody who's using his phone actively spends eight dollars in Marks and Spencer. So, and, and that's not very different from what's happening in many other services industries. So we got to really figure out that the channel for buying, and as the customer stands and he says, know me, listen to me, and serve me, what's, what's, it, what's the channels they are using now to know, listen, or to get served? One of, the, one of the exercises we were doing in India literally made us realize that 50% of OPD appointment bookings was actually happening through the internet. And uh, we actually went back and tried to stress test that system of backward calling to set up the appointment, follow on through, and the drop rate was as high as 80 to 90 percent. Because the hospital just wasn't geared up with respect to the people who needed in the contact center to manage that volume of traffic that is now coming in and changing the whole model of how people are accessing services of hospitals. The other interesting thing that came out was uh, the relationship between nappies and alcohol. And uh, you know, logically there's, there's no relation, right? Though, though my alcohol consumption went up after I had a baby. But then what Tesco did was that they would ship vouchers of beer to people who were buying nappies. Because they realized that the fathers would reduce their visits to the pub. And my question to all health providers is, how many of us are reaching back to every patient or their family member who's walked into our hospital and who have people or who have resources allocated in our hospital to mine that data to figure out what more needs could they have? So point to think about. The other thing, you know, when, when people talk about and people talk about technology and they say there are these four mega trends that are happening in technology. Social media is taking place, there's something called embedded systems and all of us will carry chips and wearable devices and all this thing. There is augmented reality and uh, there is big data. I would like to add one point to it, which is the Indian reality of workflow. I think of all of this, I think the big challenge we face, John, today here is how do we just make our workflow more efficient, integrate people, hardware and software to make sure that A, the patient or the customer has a much better experience and B, it's putting lesser and lesser stress on our system. And let me take two examples. There's one specific, specific situation I came across where there were ma massive queues in uh, the billing and registration counters of certain areas and the other queues were absolutely empty. And uh, they, those, those counters still needed to be manned, while the other counters are facing massive problems of delays, customer dissatisfaction, and missed appointments. So the average appointment time was getting pushed out by almost an hour in many cases. And that was leading to doctors turning up late, which was leading to people turning up late. So it's a, it's a circular effect. Now in that situation, what, what would be I mean, one of the solutions we thought about was how about handing mobile uh, uh, registration devices to people who are just walking around, uh, registering patients on the fly or as they are moving. And that literally comes back to the point that there are many pieces of workflow, if we start putting it together, we realize that it's going to impact the way we use our talent. 
because then you're looking at a very different kind of workforce who you may deploy three, four hours during the day during peak time, armed with those gadgets, walking around trying to register patients quickly and giving them those tokens, and then they could be doing something else. The other thing I came across was there was this massive hospital in Malaysia, which was almost a maze to walk through, and they had these people with digital iPad maps and just people who would guide you through the place. And that hugely decongested the 3,000 to 4,000 OPD footfalls that was happening in the main reception area. Because suddenly you had these people who were there from 9 to 1, which was the peak of the OPD time, with the iPads, who were, who were registering the patients on the fly while they were walking in and guiding them through where they wanted to be in terms of the specialized area. And I, the other example, which uh, I think all of us as patients may have suffered is just waiting to go home after we get discharged. And we're just sitting there, waiting for our insurance claim to take place, waiting for our discharge summary to happen. And we don't realize that there are bottlenecks in the workflow, which could very well be managed to at least cut down that discharge time, even while the TPA or the insurance guys take their time by almost half. And uh, that again leads to how we use that talent. So could there be people who are just discharge specialists? or who are people who write discharge summaries because one of the major, major bottlenecks of discharge time is errors in the discharge summary and then the doctor keeps sending it back and again and again. So these are simple fixes but you know at the end of the day I think when we, when we go around our, our healthcare providers and clients some of the things we talk about is literally how we are going to use IT as a tool to make our resource pool and whatever resource pool we have more efficient. The third thing I'm seeing in terms of a trend is really specialization or creation of those jobs. And I think another thing for, your, for you to think about, John, as, as you go about this whole maturity model, especially for countries that are going to face huge scarcity, is how do you specialize people and make them own the process? Because today, as, as you walk through a hospital, and that's, to my mind, one of the biggest issues on how we deploy talent, is I don't see many process owners between clinical, nursing, and administrative staff. And uh, you can put the best of the systems which lie there and collect data, but many of the process owners, the, in the absence of process owners, there's nobody to use that data in those systems. <clears throat> Last and final thing, I think, uh, with respect to the point I wanted to make on the impact of health IT on talent is with respect to training. And one of the initiatives uh, we were part of uh, in Maharashtra was uh, putting training content on uh, simple mobile devices of ASHA workers. Because we realized that you need to have a way in which you're transmitting information real time to people because training of resources, which is a event driven activity is becoming less and less practical given the churn that is happening in the workforce. So we've got to figure out a way in which you have more real-time training being impacted, and that's where IT can play a huge role. And how you continuously empower, because you're not, you'll always face that attrition. I don't think that attrition is going to go away. I was part of an IT firm where I saw attrition levels at 40 to 50% almost a decade ago, because the industry was just growing, and you needed to grab talent from other organizations. And I see the same thing happening in healthcare. But I think the way it was tackled is how do you crunch training time? How do you make sure that people are more empowered on the job and the, the, the gadget they have is the phone. All of them have a mobile phone. You don't even need to invest in anything else. How do you put simple data and simple instructions on mobile phones while they are doing their job? So there are things to ponder upon. I think I thought, uh, John, I'll give an Indian flavor to uh, some of the real world problems we face out here. And I think the, the biggest issue we face is how we make our talent more efficient. Uh, and what role does technology play in uh, just making uh, some of our resources better deployed and uh, making our patients or customers who walk in uh, meet their needs better. Uh, I think the scenario is going to change. We see more and more conversations with our clients as we walk around in India and overseas on uh, usage of IT. Uh, it's no longer putting in just an ERP system in place. I think it's becoming more and more about how you look at uh, uh, social media. 
And many of y'all would be surprised if y'all would go to social media, there could be tons of feedback that is written on each and every hospital. And people are accessing that feedback day in and day out. And let me tell you, as, as our organization, we have a dedicated team to trawl through social media every day to figure out or pick pieces that could potentially be beneficial or detrimental to our organization. And I think in healthcare, we need to think how we deploy resources to take care of some of the customers who are now accessing different channels to put in their feedback. So that's all I had. Uh, thank you, Apollo, for this uh, wonderful conference, as always. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here.